This is what happens to your body when you get hurt. Say you're chopping vegetables and accidentally cut your finger. Tiny neurotransmitters in your nerves at the site of the cut will send signals along your spinal cord to your brain, alerting it to the injury. The brain then processes these signals, gauges the severity, urgency and intensity of the injury and then sends back its own signals, increasing blood flow to the area and mobilizing your immune system to start patching it up. Essentially, pain serves two purposes. To alert you when you've been injured and to warn you to get away from a dangerous situation. Sounds straightforward enough, right? But what's happening to the body when you're in pain and there's no injury? Just imagine that you might be wearing a watch. So tomorrow if you forget to wear a watch, when you are not even wearing a watch, you will get a, always get a feeling that something is missing. Right? So what has happened is there is a circuitry which has been formed from that stimulus in your brain. Okay? And without that stimulus, your brain continues to feel that pain. This is what happens in the case of migraine, fibromyalgia and other chronic pain. Basically, pain can be classified into three broad categories nociceptive, neuropathic and dysfunctional pain. Nociceptive pain is your common injury related pain. You have a cut, the pain that you get, it is because of the nociceptors. Then you have the dysfunctional pain. Now dysfunctional pain is slightly more technical, more challenging, but it is because nothing is wrong, but your receptors are firing. Talking about neuropathic pain, now neuropathic pain, the definition is a pain which is caused by the disease or a lesion. So what is basically is trying to say is there is a disease, a systemic disease like most commonly diabetes or sugar, which it effects starts affecting the nerves, which manifests as pain. So it is a neuropathic pain. That is one. Second, there is a lesion or there is a demonstrable injury or an impact to the nervous system. Now, classically neuropathic pain is not only pain, but will also have certain sensory symptoms. For example, you can have numbness, that would be a negative sensation. Along with that, you can also have tingling, which is perceived as pin pricks, needle pricks and crawling all over your body. Fine. So that is why sometimes what happens is in neuropathic pain, you have conditions which are called as uh, hyperalgesia or allodynia. Hyperalgesia is means that uh, small pain manifesting as greater pain, uh, greater pain. For example, if I do a pin prick and you feel that somebody has stabbed you. So that is an exaggerated response to a painful stimulus. Allodynia is a non-painful stimulus causing pain. For example, if I just touch you, you have pain as if you are burning. So that is uh, allodynia. So these are the manifestations of it. Sometimes what happens is because of this hyperalgesia and allodynia, they say that I'm not able to tolerate my clothes or I'm not able to tolerate the wind. So there are emotional experiences also associated with pain because if uh, if you talk about pain which is of short duration then these emotional experiences do not manifest so much but when we talk about pain which has been there for a very long time then definitely these emotional experiences have to be taken into consideration and they become a significant factor the limbic system is the part of our brain which uh, is associated with emotions okay our feelings Fine. So once you have a pain, you get a signal to the limbic system and then emotions develop. They are transient. If things get better, pain is taken care of. Those emotions subside and we get better. But what happens is since you have that signal to and fro coming continuously. So what ha actually happens is what we call it as in layman terms, we call it as chronification of pain. In technical terms, we call it as central sensitization. Okay, so that the patient continues to have a perception of pain in spite of the stimulus not being there. So just imagine that all of us are working and are living a professional, personal, social uh, life. So imagine you have a pain, uh, you are off work for four days. So there is a certain amount of stress. Uh, at all the fronts, personal, professional and social. But just imagine if somebody is having this pain for years together, is constantly living 
with that fear that whenever he or she indulges in some activity the pain will come back or pain might come back so what happens is what we have seen in our patient is that there is a certain level of anxiety hopelessness that comes with chronic pain so that is why your emotions and moods starts getting affected because of pain and when this happens over a period of years now the the reverse also starts happening so what do i mean by that is that if you have a bad mood your pain will you will start feeling more pain and more pain will lead to more anxiety and more negative thoughts so when we see patients who have been in pain for years together or that fear of pain for years together they are in that vicious cycle where pain affects their mood and mood affects their pain we can take the help of medicines also at the same time there are certain simple interventions like cognitive behavioral therapies like mindfulness which can be combined with these to bring about a positive change in the patients and comprehensively uh, not only treat pain but at the same time bring about a uh, functional change in the day to day life of the patient